Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Why don't you take your Bibles tonight go to the book of Daniel, chapter 3 tonight. Thank you so much, Cody. Appreciate you, brother. I want to speak to you tonight on the subject of being tried in the fire. Tried in the fire. I've been reading and studying the book of Daniel again this week, and you come across this wild pack pioneers. Their name is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I don't know if it's not, you know, if it's politically incorrect, but I remember being raised and hearing this message on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I heard Shadrach, Meshach, and one bad Negro. I thought that was powerful. So, y'all okay? Just keep breathing. It's okay. Amen. I love it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these three Jewish boys, <laughs> these three Jewish boys, they were captive in Babylon, but these boys were bold as lions. These boys were bold as lions. They refused to bow down, and they refused to worship an image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had created and demanded a decree, commanded a decree that everybody should bow down and worship this idol. And these three young men were bold as lions, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel chapter 3, actually I'm going to read a, a verse. I know I didn't give this to our team tonight for the, the scriptures, but I'm, I'm going to start out in verse 17 if you're there. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version right now at this point. But it says, our God whom we serve, this is from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, they say, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from this burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, we do not serve other gods. You know what? I like these guys. <laughs> I like these guys. He says, we do not serve other gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Wow. So Nebuchadnezzar, he's in rage, he's in fury, he's breathing threats, and they deny his threat. And he had this furnace heated seven times hotter. And we're going to begin in verse 19. Are you there? Daniel 3 and 19, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. And then these men were bound in their coats and in their trousers and turbans and their garments. And they were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Verse 22. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, the furnace was exceedingly hot. And the flame of the fire killed those men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And then King Nebuchadnezzar, he was astonished. And he rose in haste and spoke. Don't you love the Bible? He rose in haste and spoke. That means he launched off his lazy boy, grabbed his hair, almost pulled it out and said, what is going on? Are you with me? Then King Nebuchadnezzar, he was astonished and he rose in haste, and he spoke, saying, listen to this, to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the furnace? And they answered to the king, true, O king. Verse 25, I love it. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost every time I read verse 25. I see four men loosed walking in the midst of the fire, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Woo! The form of the fourth man is like the Son of God. 
Wow. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If they were here to preach tonight, I think they would preach with unquenchable fervor tonight of what it really means to be tried by fire. Tried by fire. Their life, their witness, their boldness, their fervency, their purity only to worship. Hear this. Their purity unto the Lord God only to tell the king, we, we do not bow down and serve or worship other gods. Their life in 2018 is prophesying and speaking to this generation in this hour. Do not bow down. They would tell us, do not bow down to compromise. They would tell us, do not bow down to intimidation or manipulation from man. They would tell us, do not bow down to the corruption of this age. Do not bow down to the spirit of this age. Don't you bow down to it. These boys, if they were here tonight preaching, and maybe they're thundering in the cloud of witnesses saying, Brian's getting it on in Sarasota. Listen to this. (laughs) They would say, don't bow down to wicked and corrupt leadership. Are you alive tonight? Come on, are you with me? Don't you leave me up here all alone. They would tell us, "Do, do not bow down to wicked and corrupt and profane leadership. Don't you dare do it. They would tell us, don't you bow down to idol worship. Don't you bow down to God hating agendas. Don't you do it. While everyone else is bowing down in our generation, God is calling us to stand. And I'm telling you, in this hour, it is the word of the Lord. We need to learn how to stand in the day of adversity. I'm telling you, I'm coming at you tonight. I'm preaching. Are you with me? We need to learn how to stand in this hour and stand strong no matter the cost. We've got to be willing to stand with Jesus. Young people, hear me tonight. You've got to be willing even at times to stand alone just with Jesus. This hour demands that we learn how to stand. We've got to stop bowing down and cowering down to the spirit of this age. I'm here to empower you tonight. Come on. I met with an educational leader this week in Sarasota County. I asked him plainly these words. I said, why are you bowing down to the LGBTQ task force agenda? Why are you bowing down to that? His face was interesting. I want to tell you something. We need courageous soldiers in this hour. We need courageous leaders, courageous Christians in this hour. We need soldiers We've got to stop bowing down to the enemy. We've got to take this personal tonight, folks. My friends, take this personal. We cannot bow down to the devil. We can't give the devil any place. Paul writes in in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, he says, give no place to the devil. You need to take that personal. Give no place to the devil in your life, in your home, in your business, in your dreams, in your finances. Come on. All right, we're going back to the Bible. Verse 26, are you still there? Nebuchadnezzar, he went near the mouth of the burning furnace, and he spoke to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. I mean, can you imagine this? Can you imagine this? Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they came out of the midst of the fire. Now, I want you to hear that tonight. They came out of the midst of the fire. I'm preaching to you tonight, tried in the fire. They came out of the midst of the fire, and the satraps and the administrators and the governors and the king's counselors, they gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. Woo! Woo! That's what I want to see. I want to see a mighty army of God raised up in this hour that the enemy had no power or effect over them. The hair on their head was not even singed. 
and their garments weren't affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Ha <laughs> ha! I love this. I remember years ago we were listening to T.D. Jakes. I, I'll never forget this. This kind of whirls around in my head every once in a while. He said, let me give you a picture of what favor looks like. He said, favor is like dropping a guy off in the desert in his underwear, nothing else. And you come back and you find him in the city and he's in a brand new suit, a nice pluff tie. He's got some keys around his hand. He's walking to his car. That's favor. That's what favor looks like. That's what these guys were walking in. You understand that? They were in the worst possible predicament in the favor of God. They come out whistling. Ha <laughs> ha, whistling. Look at all prime. Yeah, highly starched, clean. Right? Are you with me? Clothes dry clean in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not a smell of fire on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke. He said, <laughs> Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they frustrated the king's word. And they yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, this is Nebuchadnezzar. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks... Anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut to pieces. And their houses shall be made into an ash heap. Because, here it is, there is no other God who can deliver like this. Come on, shout tonight. Come on. Come on, shout victory. There's no other God who can deliver like this. Watch this. Verse 30, don't you miss this. Don't you miss this. You ready for it? Are you ready for it? Then the king promoted, promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. This is quite a pathway to promotion. This is no climbing the ladder of scratching. You scratch your, my back and I'll scratch yours and I'll just climb the ladder of manipulation. No, their pathway to promotion was, we will honor God. We will not bow down to any other God. This is the pathway to their promotion. I want you to get that tonight. They were tried by fire. And through that fire, promotion came to them because they would not yield. They would not conform to the spirit of that age. Are you getting this tonight? Come on, are you getting this tonight? Listen to this quote tonight. This is from General George Patton. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> and believe me, I have one without cursing in it, so you can all breathe. Battle is the most magnificent competition. Hear this tonight, young people. Battle is the most magnificent competition in which human beings can indulge. It brings out all that is the best, and it removes all that is base. All men are afraid in battle. The coward is the one who lets his fear overcome his sense of duty. Duty is the essence of manhood. Are you with me tonight? You don't know the greatness of God that could come out of you until you're in a fierce battle. Okay? Can I keep coming at you? You don't know the greatness and the power and the fierceness and the aggressiveness of Christ in you, the hope of glory, until you get into a fight. My dad had this saying years ago. He used to say... He, he, he would say, I've walked over bigger men than you just to get to a fight. <laughs> I'm speaking to you tonight about being tried by fire. Tried by fire. I want you to listen to the words of Paul in 2 Timothy tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 2 as you're turning there. 
or you're looking at the screen, or you're putting them in your journal and in your notes. 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm going to begin to read in verse 3. Paul writes his spiritual son. His spiritual son, Timothy, he writes him these words. And he says, therefore you must endure hardship as a good soldier. Eat this tonight. Would you do that? You must endure hardship as a good soldier. I'm telling you right now, I'm so glad that you're here eating this. That you're not just here in some puffy church getting some little inspirational cookie tonight. I want to talk to you like General Patton tonight. I want to talk to you like the Apostle Paul tonight. You need to endure hardship like a good soldier. Come on, say you like this. (laughs) A good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engages in warfare, entangles himself in the affairs of life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Paul uses these words in Corinthians. He says, be watchful. This is in chapter 16. He says, be watchful, stand fast in the faith, be brave, and be strong. We need this level of message in this hour. I'm telling you, we need this level of intensity and aggressiveness in this hour as Christians so that we don't falter and faint and fall back and run away from this hour that the Lord is calling you into. We say around here a lot that the kingdom of God was always meant to go forward in shaping culture, never to retreat from it. We've got far too many Christians retreating so that they can have a nice, passive, comfortable life. That's not what God's called you to. God's called you to the day of battle. And I'm going to tell you something even better than that. He's called you to the day of ever-increasing victory. Let's respond to the word. Okay, are you with me? Listen, when we're in the prayer room praying for the first hour before we come into this family room, I don't let anyone pray without everyone in the room following up with a shout of victory over that prayer. What am I doing? I'm deliberately teaching us how do you respond to the word of the Lord. You have to respond in your spirit with a yes and amen. I'm not talking about hype. I'm not your cheerleader. I'm your leader, but I'm not your cheerleader. But you've got to get a yes and an amen in your spirit. You've got to let your faith take hold of this. You've got to take it personal. You've got to take it personal. I I was watching a documentary this week about President Ronald Reagan's life. And I love what this commentator said about his life. He said, you know know what, what distinguished him from other men? He took everything personal. And because he took it personal, it branded him into the battle and the fight to stand up for others. It's amazing how many people here preaching, they don't take it personal. (laughs) Are you all okay? Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. These these words may sound familiar. They're not Patton, they're Jesus. (laughs) In Matthew chapter 5, I'm going to begin to read in verse 10. He said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 10. Are you there? Are you there? Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you're reviled. And they persecute you and they say all kinds of evil things against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Wow. I mean, Jesus is trying to really change the way we think. He's trying to change the way that we think, that we process, and the way that we see reality. He's trying to get us to see and think differently. It's called repentance. That's what repent means. It means to change the way you think. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for I say, great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets that were before you. I love how Jesus stacks this up, because you have to understand, you're not alone in this battle. Did you hear that tonight? You're not alone in this battle. There have been pioneers, prophets that have went long before us that have braved the way. 
You need to know you're not alone in this adventure, this grand faith adventure that will cost you everything. You need to know they didn't receive the prophets before you. Y'all with me? Y'all, y'all with me? Romans chapter 5. We're using our Bibles tonight, and it's good to use our Bibles. Romans 5. Paul writes this most epic, epic book, this testament of the glory of Jesus Christ, this gospel. In Romans chapter 5, I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Those are absolutely beautiful words. And we rejoice in hope in the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produce perseverance. And perseverance produces character. And character, it actually produces hope. And now hope does not lead to disappointment. Underline that in your Bible tonight. Hope does not lead to disappointment because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Look at this. We've got to renew our minds to have an understanding that we've got to glory in tribulations and trials. We've got to persevere. When I, when I think about Cody up here, and, and I don't know if this thing's on. Yes, it's on. And I can't play a lick of this thing. I'm not a worship leader. And so, I, it, wow, there's, there's an effect. I like this even better. It makes me feel like I'm on Star Trek. Okay. So when we think about we go from glory to glory to glory. Could you imagine tonight Cody back here saying, we go from glory to glory through persecutions and trials and all kinds of obstacles. And we're, glo- we're growing. We're changing. We're being afflicted. We're challenged. We're in trials. We're in persecutions. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine trying to push that flat tire up the hill? Everybody's hands would just... <laughs> But actually, if the Apostle Paul was here preaching, and actually he is, his testament is actually preaching to us right now. He's saying we have to actually change our way of thinking because we go from glory to glory and faith to faith when we're going through tribulations. He says, I want you to actually glory in it. Now, this is intense stuff. This is is for soldiers. You understanding this? A soldier has to endure, a good soldier of Jesus Christ has to endure hardship properly and right. Because something happens on the inside of us when we're going through trials and tribulations. Because Paul says it's actually producing something within us. It's producing perseverance. And it's producing character on the inside of us. And then he goes further and he says, this character within us, it actually produces a real hope. And it's a real hope that doesn't disappoint you. You ever had someone come up to you and say, hey man, don't get your hopes up? (laughs) That's bad advice. Have you ever told yourself, don't get your hopes up? That's really poor advice. Hope does not lead to disappointment. I believe in these pressing times in 2018, we're about ready to cross the threshold and precedent. You know, I I just thought about it right now. We're about ready to celebrate Christmas. This is a good old Christmas message, isn't it? Just a good old, good old Christmas message. We're going to march our way to Bethlehem. Maybe, uh, actually, I doubt it. it. Maybe it'll happen next week. But in the midst of pressure and trying times, we're going into 2019. I am confident of this, that God sees what we cannot. I want to say that again. I'm confident of this, that God can see what we cannot see yet. He is working in us a victory that is unprecedented to those who overcome. A victory that is unprecedented to those that overcome and those that persevere. I want to talk about perseverance for a little bit. Take some notes. 
perseverance. Perseverance is having the capacity and the ability to bear up under difficult obstacles or circumstances. Perseverance is not, it's not just the ability to simply survive. This is good news tonight. I'm trying to help us. Perseverance is not just the ability to just simply survive. It's far greater than that. Because through perseverance, you actually become a person who is able to take on spiritual weight and spiritual muscle. You're actually changing. I'm going to go back to that. I'm changing. I'm changing. And that's what happens in the process of our journey, our faith journey, and our faith life. We start changing. And what happens, if you persevere, you start taking on muscle. You start taking on spiritual weight. I'd like to think I look like Schwarzenegger in the spirit. (laughs) He said, through... Through the trials and tribulations, it begins to produce something in you. You're changing. Jesus actually said to his disciples around John 16. John 16, he says, there are some more weightier things that I would like to speak unto you now, but you cannot bear them yet. But when the spirit of truth is sent to you, he will speak to you and reveal to you these things that I want to say to you. Jesus wanted them to be able to bear up under the weight and the power of the gospel, but it was going to take the Holy Spirit to take them into that place. Come on, that was a real word. Are you with me? God is working in you. Take it personal tonight. He's working in you and me right now. He's working to make you and I into a man and a woman that is absolutely amazing. He wants to make you into a woman. He wants to make you into a man that has been tested, tried, and found to be true. He wants you to be tested, tried, and found true. Let me tell you something. Truth is very powerful. It's warming you up. Truth is very powerful. I had a scenario a couple of months ago in Washington, D.C., and everyone was sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for Brett Kavanaugh to take his seat after his accuser falsely accused him and lied about him. And there was such a demonic, vile presence in that Senate building until, until, He sat in that seat and began to declare and speak the truth. And let me tell you what it did. It flushed that place like a toilet. Truth is so powerful. Truth is so powerful. A life is so powerful like a weapon in the hand of God. A man who has been tried, tested, found true. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could preach to you tonight. There is, a, there is such a power that is released through lives of men and women who have been tried, tested, found to be true. They embody truth. They embody the wisdom of God, the perseverance of God, the character of God. And then there's found in them, within them, to be gold. Gold. I want to say over some of you tonight, you would have never, you would have never been able to bear up under such weightiness of God in your life unless you would have persevered through your tribulations. Somebody say amen. Amen. It's through perseverance that proven character is that which becomes tested and it's found pure. It's found authentic. Character gives birth to hope. That's what Paul said. Character gives birth to hope. And that hope literally empowers you and I to overcome. 
Do not underestimate the value of your process and your development. Do not underestimate the value of your process and your development. Are you with me tonight? So Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 6. He says, don't grow weary while you're doing good. Don't grow weary while doing good. For in due season, you're going to reap if you do not lose heart. This is no time to lose heart, folks. This is no time to lose heart. If Paul was here, he would tell you in Hebrews 12, 12, he would say, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. Pull yourself together. Strengthen what is weak. Strengthen yourself in God. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Don't retreat. Move forward. Are you with me? He would tell you, pray without ceasing. That's what Paul would tell you. He would say, pray without ceasing. When you feel like sneezing, sneezing, ceasing. (laughs) When you feel like giving up, everybody gets to a place where they feel like giving up. Everyone does. Let you hear Paul, who is one of all of our mentors, telling you, pray without ceasing. I mean, imagine the boldness of the apostle Paul. He has the audacity to just write down, hey, by the way, I pray in tongues more than all of you. Mic drop. (laughs) There's my tweet. Can you imagine the Apostle Paul, you know? I mean, people are reading Trump. I mean, they're sitting on the edge of their seat for Trump's next tweet. Could you imagine just the Apostle Paul tweet now? I speak in tongues more than all of you. Bam. You're welcome. Deal with it. (laughs) Deal with it. And the audacity of that. What is he doing? He's giving us a secret on how you actually overcome in this age. You gotta pray without ceasing. You gotta pray without ceasing. You cannot retreat. You cannot back up. You gotta keep praying and praying and fighting the good fight of faith. Fighting the good fight of faith. And don't quit. And Paul tells us in Romans 12, in verse 21, he says, Don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. I love that scripture. Don't be overcome with evil. Friend, don't be overcome with evil of this hour, but overcome evil with good. He goes on in Hebrews chapter 10. Put it in your notes tonight. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. He says, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Let us hold fast the confession of Of our hope without wavering. For he who is promised, he is faithful. In the book of Revelations, it says that he is the faithful and true one. It's his very name. He is faithful and true. When you make a promise, you create hope. But when you fulfill a promise, you create trust. He's worthy of your trust. I said he's worthy of your trust. He's worthy of my trust. I'd like you to go to Romans chapter 4 for just a moment. We're tracking some mileage. We're using our Bible. I like this. We use our Bibles at Victory. I had somebody thank me a couple weeks ago. They just knew here. They're saying, thank you for preaching the Bible. I just thought, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just wild th- these, these days, you know? You know? <laughs> I mean, this is deep. Forrest, Forrest Gump said, you know, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. It's like that with church. I mean, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Paul had the audacity. Man, this is crazy. This is, Paul had the audacity 
in Corinthians to write these words. Don't have fellowship with demons. Another mic drop. I mean, it's just simple. Just don't have fellowship with demons. Why am I saying this? It's amazing the things that we've got to say in this hour. We use the Bible. Are we an anomaly? I hope not. Romans chapter 4 and verse 18. He said, who contrary to hope, and he's speaking about Abraham, in hope he believed. So that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. Man, that's so powerful. Read that again. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. We could just rearrange that very verse right there and say, it is literally unbelief that causes us to waffle and waver like a wave that's tossed to and fro at the promise of God. Unbelief will ambush us every time. But that's not what Abraham did. He believed. And it says he was strengthened in his faith. I love that. Are you with me tonight? He, he said he didn't waver in the promise of God. He kept his hope burning. He kept his hope alive. He didn't fall into the trap of unbelief. And then he strengthened his faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he was promised, he was able to perform. My God, that's so powerful. This has to become our declaration. That when we're in the heat of the battle, that when we're in the heat of the battle and the trial and the persecution and the things that we're, we're going through, the meat grinder of life that only your few closest friends really know about. And you're going through the grinder. You've got to understand it's producing in you perseverance. Don't you lose your hope. It's producing in you character. And this hope does not disappoint 2 Timothy, and I'm almost done. I'm running hard. I'm running hard. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're about there. We're about there. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Again, Paul, this is a mighty declaration. I'm going to begin to read in verse 7. Are you there? Yes, you are. That's awesome. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I want, you to, I want to point this out. We need to understand that fighting the good fight of faith... Finishing the race, uh, keeping the faith, they're not three things. They're not three separate things. They're one and the same. You can't, you can't win at two of these and fail at the third and think that you're going to make it. It's one and the same. It's like a three-chord strand. It's a three-chord strand that cannot be broken. You have to fight the good fight. You have to finish the race. You have to keep your faith. This is good. We're, it's like I'm, I'm, an, I'm an orchestra conductor. Can the trombones say amen over here? Can, can the violins say amen? Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. Not only to me, but to all those who have loved his appearance. You have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to finish the race. You have to keep your faith. You have to endure hardship as a good soldier. You have to lace up your boots. Again, when you don't feel like lacing up your boots, you have to move forward in this when you don't feel like moving forward. Oh, I, I can just hear Paul in Philippians right now when he talks about demonic battles that are coming against you he just gives this picture just put your head out the window and just let the wind hit you in the face because it's mocking them of their perdition so that they know their time is very short and ending that's what Paul said when you're under demonic attack he's like just throw your head right in the wind and mock them ha <laughs> ha I remember when Brent and I were in Bible college, 
We, our freshman year, 1991, freshman year, and our president at Southeastern, he had this message, ha ha, Mr. Devil, <laughs> ha ha, Mr. Devil. It's what Paul was saying, just throw your head flagrantly in the wind as a proof of their perdition that their time is short. That's in Philippians, find it. It's in the Bible. What are the odds? What are the odds? I, I, it's in the Bible. Wow. Tried by fire tonight. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm almost there. I know I've said that, but I'm almost there. I want to talk to you for a moment about gold, silver, and precious stones. I want to talk to you about wood, hay, and straw. I want to talk to you about gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, and straw. I'm trying. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. This is a judgment of the Lord concerning how we build our lives. This is a judgment from the Lord. And understand that, folks, that we will stand before God and we will give an account. And we will be judged on how we built our lives upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God that was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another one builds on it, but let each one take heed how he builds on it, for no other foundation can anyone lay that which, that which was laid, which is, say it with me, Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, Wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed how? By fire. Say it again. By fire. And the fire will test each one's work. Wow. The fire will test each one's work. Of what sort it is. See, this is a reality check, folks, of what is the substance. What is proven to be the substance of our life. Is it gold? Is it silver? Is it precious stones? Is it wasteful straw, wood, hay that can be burned up? What is it? If any man's work which is built on it endures, he will receive a reward. Wow, that's encouraging, hey? I don't know what all that means, but I'm excited about it. I'm serious. I like rewards. I'm into rewards. I'm into gifts. I'm into it. I love it. I don't know what the Lord's going to reward you. I don't know what he's going to give to you, but we'll stand before him, and then he will judge our lives. Our lives will pass through the fire. Our lives will be tested by the holy fire of the Lord on how we built our lives in this life. And that will be our reward in eternity. We don't talk a whole lot about this in church, do we? We're talking about amassing stuff and bigger houses and cars and, and, and everything else. Man, I got scriptures. Paul says these words, he said, you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is, what is promised. That's Hebrews 10.36. Hebrews 10.36. He tells us in Hebrews 12, he says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight of sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. The author, the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame. See, Jesus knew something about persecution, trials. He threw his head into the wind of trials and shame and pain. Being ostracized by men. Being forsaken. Despising the shame, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. I want to say clearly tonight, your fight and your faith, it will be tested. It's okay. 
Your, your fight and your faith, it will be tested. The Apostle Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. This is the New Living Translation. You got five more minutes left in you? This side? Do you have five more minutes left in you? He said, dear friends, don't be surprised at fiery trials. This is for somebody in here tonight. And that somebody is every one of us. Don't be surprised at fiery trials that you're going through. Man, we need to hear this. As if something strange were happening to you. I'm telling you, one of the enemy's little schemes is to get you off in a corner that you start feeling like you're the only one that's getting creamed. You feel like, how in the world? I mean, what, why am I being subjected to this? Why, why, why is this happening to me? I'm telling you, if I could hand the mic around this room, you'd be shocked. I'm telling you, if I could hand the microphone around this room, you'd be shocked. People are under trial. They're under test. They're under persecution. They're being watched. And you know what? Heaven's watching too. Your father is watching your faith. He's listening. He's listening to your hope. He's listening to your heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. Man's caught up in all the fluff and, and what kind of shirt you got on and how's your hair look and what kind of designer jeans or shoes that you're wearing. God looks at the heart. He can read your heart. And your heart, your heart can please God. Your heart can please God. When no one else can see, when no one else can see what's really going on in your life, your heart can be pleasing God. You can be going through hell, hell, and your heart can be pleasing God. I'm going to wrap it up in a minute. I promise. I promise. I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. Actually, I can't do that. I've got to go to 1 Peter 1. I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm trying to skip so much. I've got three sermons laying in front of me. I couldn't shut it off today. I couldn't shut it off today. I'm telling you what, the spigot was just pouring and pouring and pouring in study today in my office. That first book I wrote, I mean, finally, Dutch Sheets said he wrote the foreword. He said, Brian, would you please stop writing? My gosh, you're 230 pages. Would you just shut the spigot off? We got it. We got it already. Just stop writing. You got a book. <laughs> Don't make it 500 pages. I felt like that today when I was printing this out. I'm like, dear, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. First Peter chapter 1. I'm almost done, and I mean that. I'm almost done. In verse, <laughs> you don't believe me over here. I can hear it. <laughs> Come on. Keep your hope up. All right. <laughs> Take hold of that. Yes. In this greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. If you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now you see why I couldn't skip it. So Paul tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 15. He says, we do not have a high priest that cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. But at all points, Jesus was tested as we are, yet without sin. That should encourage all of us. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to tell you that when you're in the fight... And you're, look, look, you've, you're in one of three places, basically, like this. You've either just got over a fight, or you're coming into a fight, or you're about to have a fight. <laughs> it's just reality. Jesus was tempted in all like matters. He, he can sympathize with our weaknesses. I don't want you to miss that. You're not alone in this. You're not alone in this. 
Jesus empathizes with the struggles and the pains and the tribulations we're in in this life. You're not alone in this. Somebody really needs to hear that tonight. You're not alone in this. So Paul wraps it up tonight for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He, he's an all-star tonight. He's preaching all over this message. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, beginning in verse 24, he says, So run to win. Run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win the prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete training to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Wow. Wow. I'm going to go back to the front of this train. There's a whole lot more on this pulpit right here. This thing's got wheels on it. One day, I'm just going to wheel. One day, I'm just going to start wheeling. I'm going to wheel so close to some of you. And I'm going to preach like a man on fire and give you a front row. I'm going to come right into that video camera, into your front room. <laughs> I'm going to start it. I'm going to go back to the start in the front of this train. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they would tell us, they would tell us tonight, don't you bow down to the enemy. Don't you bow down. Don't you bow down to compromise. Don't you bow down to corrupt and immoral leaders. Don't you bow down to people that demand that you deny our God and our Lord and, de and, and, and demand that we deny His very word. Don't you do that. When everyone right now is being courted to compromise... A.W. Tozer said, it's not our job to tinker and edit the Word of God. It's our job to believe it and obey it. Amen. I'm speaking to you as mature soldiers because that's who we are. That's who you are. God is building you. And he's making you a victorious man and a victorious woman that can carry weight and muscle in the kingdom and use his authority. You are mighty in God. You are mighty in God. You are anointed. You are called out. You are separated unto the Lord. You are separated unto the Lord. You are holy unto the Lord. And you're blessed. Even in persecution, even in trial, persevere. Amen? Amen. Put your Bibles aside and I want to...